Hello, I'm Oliver Bridgewood and I'm joined by Paul Norman and James Bracey for November's edition of Cycling Weekly's Tech of the Month, where each month we bring you some of the latest and most exciting products that we've come across. So, first up, I'm going to tag you in, Paul. What have you got? I have this Topeak Ninja chain tool. Now, if you're like me, I tend to find, I look in my saddle pack and I find I've accumulated a whole load of stuff in there which I've not used for ages. And so I have a turnout and I throw everything out and then I find out it's one of the things I need has been thrown out. A classic one is a chain tool because you, you have it in your, chain, your saddle pack or, or in, if you put it in a jersey pocket, you hardly ever need to use it. But then when you do need to use it, it's absolutely critical. This gets around that problem of having cat lug it around in your saddle pack because you pop it in the ends of your, um, end of your bars. You don't notice it's there, uh, but it's there when you need it. So you can get, sort yourself out if you do have a broken chain. So it comes in two halves. It's all uh, CNC'd, it's pretty solid. Um, the other good thing is that that's a four millimeter Allen key. So you can tighten up your bars when they fall off. Or your seat post. Uh, or your seat post or most things, most big bits on your bike. Um, and it's got a little thing to hold, hold your chain together while you use the tool. So it's a really useful way to carry a chain tool without being frustrated by the extra weight. Although, of course, it is extra weight because it's 80 grams or so. Cool. Yeah. Right, so next up, James, what have you brought to the table? Well, I've got a little bit of an exclusive here. These are the new Hunt Four Season Aero V2 wheel. Catchy so, name. Catchy name for a catchy wheel. Um, this is one of only two pairs in the country at the moment, but they are imminently going to be released. £339, really, really good. Um, what's good about this is they've taken on board what people have said about the original version, which was still well received, and they've improved it even more so. Good thing about the original version is, is it's a four season winter wheel that doesn't weigh a tonne. So it rode really, really well. It was lively. They've taken that on board and they've made it just a little bit wider. So it fits wider tires a little bit easier. It's tubeless ready. So it comes with the, the tube valves. Um, the tape is ready to go as well. So you can run it tubeless as most of us are trying to do now as well. Um, and they've increased the, the, the actual sort of seals in the bearings as well. There's 24 spokes in the rear, on the front, 28 spokes on the rear, so it's a strong wheel. Yeah. You know, it, it, the, there's no rider weight limit on it compared to some other wheels as well. So you've been really impressed with them then? Mm. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I guess it's easy to maintain too because you've got J bend spokes, so they're easy to get hold yeah, of. Yeah, exactly. There's, uh, there's no sort of like sort of uh, proprietary spokes here. Um, standard J bend spokes, brass nipples as well. That's so, you know, when it comes to sort of riding in the winter with the salty roads, there's no, no corrosion going to happen on those. Excellent. Right. Well, that leaves uh, me. And I have got this, which is not a bin bag. It's actually, um, if it would be, it'd be the most expensive bin bag money could buy. But no, it is the Gore One, which is um, quite possibly the greatest waterproof jacket available to humanity right now. Uh, <laughs> quite a big claim. Yeah, really? yeah but, but what makes it, it special? You know, well, it's all about the fabric. So Gore-Tex, you know, everyone knows Gore-Tex. It's, you know, famous. It's been in space suits and everything. Um, they've invented a new fabric, which uh, is thinner. It is a 2.5 layers of material is what they're saying. It's thinner and lighter than anything they've made before. And it also, has a permanently beading surface. But you can see, even if I pour this water on, I mean, you can see that that is just still beading perfectly. It's a thinner, lighter fabric. It retains its beading. But the other amazing thing about this jacket is how light it is. Well, you can shake it dry, actually. <laughs> so it shakes dry. But you can pack it down you know, it's the size of a fist. So what you've got is like the packability and lightweight of a rain cape that you can easily stuff in your jersey pocket, but you've got the, the water, uh, wet weather water protection of a dedicated hard shell. And it's, and it's breathable. It's incredibly breathable, yeah. So you've got the best of both worlds. And it's a good fit. 
Yeah, the fits, uh, you know, depends on what size you go for, but the, the fit on me is a good sort of tight sort of fit. Not like a big bin bag that flaps in the wind then? Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's a good sort of athletic fit. So yeah, that brings us on to our bike of the month, um, which this month, Paul, you've, you've decided. Yes, this month I've got the Scott Edict CX-10 cyclocross bike. Okay. Um, it's really light. So it comes in at uh, 890 grams for the frame and another 390 for the forks. We've got the top spec CX-10 model here. And so it comes with carbon wheels, carbon stem, carbon handlebars. And um, so the 54 centimeters, which we've got in, uh, weighed in at 7.73 kilos. So that's almost exactly 17 pounds. So how does that, to put that into context for people who aren't that familiar with cyclocross bikes, how does that weight compare with other top spec cyclocross bikes? It's definitely on a par to lighter. Um, certainly with all this kit on it, it's, it's coming out light. So to really get it lighter, you'd have to throw a lot of money extra on top of that. Well, you could probably get it down to the UCI weight limit yeah. by swapping out for tubs. So, uh, so yeah, it's a really light bike, but it is a, it is a racing, it, it's a bike geared for cyclocross racing. So there's not that much compliance in the frame relative to some other bikes like the Trek Boon with active compliance. Yeah, it's very much an out and out race cyclocross bike. Very good, it's a cool bike. So that's all we have time for this month, but join us next month for December's edition, which is gonna be our Christmas special of Tech of the Month. So until then, see you next time. Mm -hmm.